wherever you're joining in from. 8th of August, 2020. First of all, congratulations if you still survive and made it this far. For what has been a incredibly bizarre, incredibly intense year, this 2020. Um, and I know a lot of people, especially outside of New Zealand, where I'm beaming this from. Um, a lot of people are still going through some incredible hardship out there. So first of all, if you are still joining with us, thank you. Uh, it's not easy out there for sure. Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud. This is a very beautiful, peaceful place. Um, and in a way, I feel incredibly privileged to, to be here, that my family brought me here when I was 15. Uh, from Sri Lanka, where, where I hail from. City of Kandy in central Sri Lanka, shout out. It's my hometown. Uh, wonderful place. If you haven't been there, you should be. You should go check it out. Uh, City of Kandy was kind of like this Machu Picchu of Sri Lanka, right? So that's the uh, central highlands where the uh, warlord clans, feudal clans, where my family also come from, and I know some of uh, my friends, my closest friends, are still from those families from medieval feudal days, right? So we we grew up with this kind of awareness, um, even at a very young age. But <sighs> island empire, what is island empire? To begin, I want to I want to start reading um, this quote from a Tongan Fijian professor, anthropologist, um, and a writer, a poet, a mystic of sorts. And his name is Professor Epeli Hawofa, E-P-E-L-I, surname is spelled H-A-U apostrophe O-F-A. So uh, this person wrote this quote. Let me just read it out to you. We should not be defined by the smallness of our islands, but in the greatness of our oceans. We're the sea, we're the ocean. Oceania is us. This quote, along with a few things that came after this quote, started to change my life in, in, in a way that I'm yet to grasp what the outcome is going to be like and how significant it's already been in a very, very quick uh, period of time. I'm talking about roughly about a year. Um, September last year, September 2019, um, was when I was beginning to beginning to be conscious about this, this process that's been happening, right? Um, since then, I started or at least attempted, tempting to, uh, to commit to a particular very different lifestyle, a very different mindset that I was living in uh, prior to 2019, right? And Island Empire is just one of those expressions of, uh, of a kind of a public commitment to myself to embrace and embody the, uh, the learnings uh, of, of the last 11 months. So we should not be defined by the smallness of our islands, but in the greatness of our oceans. We are the sea, we are the ocean. Oceania is us. Professor Epeli Haofa, Pacific writer and anthropologist. To me, as a New Zealander of Sri Lankan descent, uh, when I heard this quote, something changed, something sort of clicked in my mind, saying, hang on a minute. Sri Lankans, particularly Sinhalese, we think like island. We think like the small dot in the uh, in the ocean, uh, forever at odds with neighbors who are who are wanting to sort of take us away and and just completely take our identity as Sri Lankans as people of the small island. We have the small island mentality. We're always defensive, right? And that's been like that for the last two thousand years. And this is where me and my friends kind of got talking about this idea of of another identity that we may have kind of forgotten about a thousand years ago, right? Um, the very great first city of Sri Lanka, Anuradhapura in the, uh, the Northern Plains. This city was as the site 
size of Babylon at its zenith. This city had buildings that is as tall as the Great Pyramid. This city has massive markets and, and temple complexes where Buddhism thrived, different types of Buddhism and Hinduism alongside. There was this uh, fascinating, wealthy, sophisticated urban culture that was thriving on the island for thousand years. Another Pro Kingdom started in um, 677 BC, so 677 years before Christ, and it lasted all the way um, till when was it? 1,100 and something, right? 1,200 or something like this. So well after the lifetime of Christ, there was this thriving empire on the island, right? And we've kind of forgotten that sort of urban global like thinking uh for the most part for the for the last uh, thousand years let's call it or let's let's even start at the portuguese time which is 500 years ago we've been having this really sort of gramica or, or provincial village like countryside very rural kind of a mindset and that's i'm not dissing that for one bit i love Sri Lankan rural Sri Lankan culture, the backwaters, the greenery, the rivers, the hills. Um, it's incredibly beautiful, of course. But the consequence of that is when when we got we became like a British territory and we became independent after that, the transition from a feudal society, a village like feudal society, into the modern industrial global interconnected culture we did not manage that transition well we didn't <clears throat> the idea of singular dominance uh, in 1972 uh, the majoritarian singular government passed a law uh, called the singular only as you probably can guess that essentially made uh, Sinhalese language, the language, my language, the only language on the island, or the official language. It recognized, it just gave the status, uh, 1972. So, consequence that was obviously the suppression of the, the Tamil language and the culture, and later, about, about another decade later, that got militarized into, uh, into the... Uh, LTTE insurgency and then the 30 years of war and all of that kind of stuff, right? So that's 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 what's in our psyche right now, right? We went from being this Babylon-like ancient culture, right? This constant influx of Northern Indian, Southern Indian, Arabian, Greek, Roman, Abyssinian, uh, China, Persia, obviously this really cosmopolitan sort of sophisticated culture, right? We lost that memory. And all we have now is this, whatever, this, this culture that the, the suit-wearing, Oxford-educated lawyer type uh, folks gave us, right? I.e., my own and many of, many of who you're watching, uh, my friends, our families, we did that, right? We kind of... We kind of started driving the direction of our cultural and social narratives from that post-colonial kind of a memory, but not successfully tapping into that old culture, that old memory of us. You know? And this idea started sort of creating certain or, or changing certain things that I've been playing in my mind for for forever, right? Uh, my beliefs about finance, my relationships, my relationships and my relationship with finance, uh, all of these started changing um, as a result of reading this particular quote. So Island Empire is me committing to myself publicly to learn more, like these kind of ideas, these kind of ideas that produced results. By thinking powerful thoughts, like that of Professor Pelli's quote that we just read, 
by practicing to think like that, by by observing thoughts like that, by carefully crafting thoughts and then practicing and exchanging thoughts like that, that seemed to have a really powerful impact. So which is why, as, as an expat, uh, Sri Lankan living in, in this beautiful place, having the luxury to sort of take my time and observe these kind of things, having the privilege to, to know that, observe that, I think there is benefit in sharing that kind of mindset. As in, if we are privileged enough to know certain things about ourselves, and if we know that by knowing it, it transformed us to to push boundaries, to overcome anxieties, addictions, to 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 push yourself physically and 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 obtain a better state of mind, if to learn to to read, to pick up a skill. If ideas can sort of motivate us to do these kind of physically real, real outcomes, I think that's a whole new way of learning, first of all. And what if it was possible to sort of think in that kingdom-like mentality? We would have much more positive, much more empowered, much more healthy identity as Sinhalese. I'm directly talking to Sinhalese right now. Right? If Sinhalese, outside of tea, outside of uh, whiskey, outside of cricket, what if it's possible for us to feel a different way? Right? What if we were alive in that cosmopolitan culture that I was just describing just before? What if it was possible to think that level? right as a as a as a valued recognized influential global regional player we need to think like that i think because there is again coming back to island empire why is it a thing is it just to geek out on on friday nights and on saturday night uh, just to talk big ideas and, and just get a kick out of it. I think there's more to that than that. Um, I think by doing this, by by absorbing information like this, by training your mind, by committing to discipline, by overcoming anxieties, by overcoming addictions, uh, by, by connecting, by having a better connection to yourself, to your body, to your mind, if we can have this kind of unified, optimized state of being, I think we can, we can begin to, or we can uh, revive that that level of, uh, of of influence, of positive influence, and we need a lot of positive influence right now. And I think it's important as we go into the future, we can begin to observe the geopolitical. Uh, theater that's taking place obviously right in 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 the indian ocean uh, china is obviously projecting power towards africa and the middle east and sri lanka is smack bang in the middle of that route so we need to wake up to these kind of new realities that's happening in our time right i'm sure there's many many of you guys just listening to this probably just go yeah of course we know that you know we we also watch the news jason you know what's what's going on uh, yes, but I think it's time to create networks that think like that because by connecting networks of powerful, influential, talented, successful people, we can sort of not only not only take control of but also fast track progress as well, like intentional action, right? What's the dollar value it's going to take? You know, like we need people to think like that and ask questions like that. How much does it cost to turn the, the Negombo waterfront into a modern waterfront? So hence why I think Island Empire just came into being like this. Um, yeah, out of these kind of uh, expansive thinking, right? But let me just quickly bring it to a bit of a, a, bit of a sharp turn. <laughs> September last year, I started reading uh, or, or coming into contact with 
the Yoga Sutras, right? The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali was written at least, I'd say, at least a few centuries before Christ. It has this one mantra, Brahmacharya Pratishtham Viralabha Ayush Tejo Balam Viram Pradnya Shri Shriyasitata Punyata Sat Priyatvamcha Vardhe Brahmacharya. So this essentially means by the practice of Brahmacharya, by the practice of self-control, by the practice of uh, semen retention, uh, yogis attain certain power or healthy life, Ayush, Tejo, presence, Balam, physical strength, Viram, virility, where the word vir in, in Latin and vir in Sanskrit is exactly the same thing. Right? Masculine essence, that's that's what vir means. Pratnya, wisdom, shrish, that would be like fame or glory or good reputation. Yasis, that means wealth. By the practice of brahmacharya, one becomes devotional, one becomes more committed, one becomes strong, healthy and all of this, right? And then obviously discover this whole community within in YouTube, in Reddit, where more and more men are taking control of their dopamine reward system in their brain and moving away from things like social media, from pornography, from uh, video gaming, from all sorts of alcoholism, drug abuse and things like this, right? So this is a really... This was a really, really interesting concept for me to look into, say, wow, this is incredible. We live in a society where dopamine addictions is, is encouraged and, and promoted, right? It's it's everywhere, right? We pick up the phone a uh, hundred times a day, you know, we just always look for that notification, that, that rush of chemicals in your brain. We are addicted, most of us, many of us, right? And I don't think that's, that's a controversial thing to say at all. This one line of Sanskrit text had the most tangible, quick turnaround of events I can remember. Noticing things like increased levels of energy, clarity, brain fog, gone. I would notice that I can just uh, just, just push through things throughout the day. And then I just kind of weaved into that practice was things like cold showers, uh, no screens after nine o'clock or after dark. Um, and things like this and into that goes things like okay there's this new energy there's this uh, there's this clarity in, in mind there's this physical energy there's this drive there's this motivation there's a sense of well-being let's channel it somewhere pour into a skill learn an instrument build a business and do some actual work and, and, and get fit, get healthy and things like that. So this is very, very physical, real kind of kind of a kind of a result or a set of results I'm talking about. So that was really, really interesting to to first of all observe, but also to practice it as well. So there we go, my friends. In conclusion, I've written some notes. Let's let's try and read some notes. In conclusion, Island Empire is my personal commitment to think like Ipeli Haofa. Think beyond cricket, tea and whiskey. Think beyond the left versus right identity politics and its various manifestations. Think beyond the glass walls placed by our political, religious and cultural structures. Think about transformative ideas like brahmacharya, like self-actualization like neuroplasticity and responsibility. If you like the vibe of all of that, feel free to go ahead and subscribe to Island Empire. Find me on Instagram, island underscore empire. Yes, that is my Instagram handle. Um, yeah, find us. Find us online. Like the video, subscribe, and yeah, leave a comment if you want to or share if you're into that as well. That's the most welcome help us grow the channel but most of all i think um again coming back to the purpose why island empire i think by learning and exploring our ancient identities and present situation that we're in and and practicing certain uh physical mental and and, and spiritual practices that enable us to 
overcome things about ourselves and change things about ourselves and 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 share that knowledge with with other people i think these kind of things should be encouraged and should be shared so there we go thanks again island empire i am javier singhal